In a previous video, we characterized matter by considering physical properties and chemical properties of matter. In this video, we look at characterizing matter in terms of its chemical composition and purity, and whether it is a pure substance or a mixture of pure substances. This diagram summarizes the important ideas about matter and especially the relationship between substances, mixtures, elements, and compounds. All matter is either a pure substance or a mixture of pure substances. Mixtures can either be homogeneous or heterogeneous mixtures, and there are two types of substances, elements and compounds. In this video, we focus on this part of the diagram and the double-ended arrow with the words physical processes is important here as it shows that mixtures are a result of a physical combination of substances to produce that mixture but also that mixtures can be separated into their constituent components by using simple physical separation techniques. It turns out that most examples of matter that we encounter every day are not pure. Most matter is in fact a physical combination of pure substances. For example, seawater, air, food, tables, chairs, and most everyday objects that we encounter are not chemically pure, but mixtures of substances. Now, I've already said that mixtures can be separated into their constituent components by physical processes, including simple techniques such as cutting, grinding, crushing, filtration, centrifugation, and distillation. So, for example, a sample of muddy water can be said to be a mixture of water and suspended solid particles. The pure water can be separated from the suspended solids by filtration, shown here by passing the muddy water through a filtration medium, which will physically remove the solid particles to leave the pure water or close to pure water being collected at the bottom. Similarly, a sample of seawater or salty water can be distilled to separate the salt water into its constituent components. We can see here that the salt water in this flask can be heated to produce water vapour. Now that's a physical process. It's a change of state from liquid water to water vapour. And the water vapour will pass down the condenser tube where it will be cooled and condensed to pure or close to pure liquid water at the end of the process. At the same time, as we keep boiling off the water, what will be left inside the flask will be a crusty lining of salt crystals. And so we've been able to use the simple physical process of distillation and changes of state to separate out the two components of salt water. A final characteristic of mixtures that we need to be aware of is that because mixtures are composed of pure substances and because the ratio of these pure substances can vary from sample to sample, the physical and chemical properties of the mixtures may vary depending on composition. So we could have two substances mixed together, for example, in a solution, but they could be there in different amounts or different concentrations, and they could therefore have vastly different chemical and physical properties as a result. Let's have a quick look at substances, formerly known as pure substances. Substances have a distinct and definite set of physical and chemical properties that don't change, unlike mixtures whose composition and therefore physical and chemical properties can change. There are two types of substances, elements such as sodium and chlorine, and compounds such as sodium chloride. And you can see here an example of a chemical process where two elements have combined together to form a compound. Elements and compounds cannot be broken down into their constituent components by simple physical means. However, compounds can be broken down into their constituent elements via chemical processes or chemical reactions. So for example, the compound sodium chloride could be broken down to its constituent elements, sodium and chlorine, via a chemical process, but not via a physical process. So it's possible to separate compounds into their constituent elements by chemical processes, but neither elements nor compounds can be broken down to simpler substances using physical processes. So in this video, we've had a look at this part of the diagram, the relationship between substances and mixtures. In upcoming videos, we will look at mixtures in some detail, including homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, and then we will look at elements and compounds in more detail as well.